Welcome everybody to this training session today on giving meaningful feedback. I'm going to cover four key areas with you. One, why it's important to give meaningful feedback. Two, some considerations to think about before you start giving feedback. Three, introducing you to the aid model. And four, we're going to see some real life actors acting out developmental and motivational feedback. Why is high quality feedback important? Ultimately, it's there to improve performance. We want more of the good work. We want less of the not so good work. We also know that feedback improves employee engagement. Our research has told us that good employee engagement increases productivity, encourages collaborative working, increases staff well-being, which overall reduces staff sickness. We know that feedback is good for our employees, our customers, and both organisations. Some considerations to think about before you start that feedback conversation are around your intentions. Think about how the person is going to receive the feedback on the other end. Think about being sincere and thinking about being honourable. We've actually categorised feedback into two specific areas. Motivational feedback, when you want to praise somebody and actually celebrate somebody who's done a very, very good job. So considerations to think about when you're offering motivational feedback is actually you wanting to get more of that good work. You want to celebrate that success. You want others to actually follow suit. You want to promote really, really good work. Considerations to think about when you're offering developmental feedback are what are the repercussions of that actual conversation? What is that person going to be thinking about when you're offering developmental feedback? Will they go into denial? Will they deflect? Or will they become defensive? The preparation around that conversation needs to take place first. Also, other considerations to think about are the values. The values will actually be entwined throughout the conversation. Feedback also needs to be timely. It can't be done in retrospect. It needs to be done pretty promptly after whatever you have observed or seen. So it has the maximum impact. It needs to be concise. What exactly did you like about what somebody has done? Don't be generic and say, that was a great, fantastic presentation. What actually did you like? Was it that the slides were very, very succinct, very colourful? Or was it the delivery that made that presentation powerful? So when we're giving feedback, it needs to be concise, it needs to be timely, and it needs to be meaningful. So you end up having more of that really, really good work we talked about earlier and less of things that haven't gone quite so well. Introducing you to the AID model. AID stands for Action, Impact and Do. On your tables, you will have copies of the AID model. The blue one is a tool for giving motivational feedback. The orange one is a tool for giving developmental feedback. So please use the copies and take them away with you and you can use them when you're back in the office. So talking through the model, motivational feedback is about building confidence. Developmental feedback is about building competence. Action. Action is based on evidence. What you've seen, what you've heard, what's going on around you. It's not based on the rumour mill, it's not based on the grapevine, it has to be based exactly on what you've seen and heard. What is the impact of what you've seen and heard and what are you going to do about it? So our feedback model, very simple, three steps, action, impact and do. We're now going to look at how this works in practice. We've all been given feedback in the past and you've wondered, how has that person made assumptions about me? Do they really understand me at all? Do they know what it's like to work in my world? We're now going to see, in practice, two examples with our actors on motivational feedback and developmental feedback. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, you're through to Michael. How can I help you today? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Yes, I can. Uh, oh, just give me a second, I'll get the file up. Okay. So I see you've called in a couple of times this week and not to be able to resolve the issue. I, yeah, you've been through to several different teams, haven't you? Okay, yeah, I really appreciate that. It is quite frustrating coming through to different teams and not actually getting the problem resolved. Okay, I can see that the issue won't be resolved in this call, but what I can do is I can actually get in touch with these teams you've spoken to beforehand and get the issue resolved and get back in touch with you. How would be a good way of doing that? Okay, I could call you back. I should hopefully be um, ready to call you back in about two hours. Would that be okay? I could call you back tomorrow if that's more convenient. So I will call you back uh, tomorrow morning, if that's, yep, yeah, that sounds good to me. And I will then sort of be able to resolve your query. Okay, thanks for the call. Bye. We just seen Michael on the telephone giving an example of very good customer care. Thinking about the aid model, what feedback would you be giving to Michael now? Please press pause and discuss in your groups. Okay, hi Michael, I just uh, wanted to give you some uh, feedback. I was uh, just doing my work and I overheard uh, your phone conversation there and it just struck me that it was an example of really, really good customer service. It sounded to me that when they phoned, uh, they were quite frustrated and you mentioned that they phoned a couple of times and you gave them time to actually express themselves and get that um, off their chest. Um, the impact seemed to be that they were then kind of ready to talk to you. How were they? Did they, did they change? Did their mood change on the phone? Yes, um, as you noticed, when they called out, they were quite frustrated because things hadn't been resolved during their sort of previous calls. But I think through to being sort of honest with um, how it was going to be resolved and to manage the expectations, they were able to um, come around to our way of thinking and they were much more optimistic about their service towards the end of the call. Brilliant. I mean, it sounded sounded really good. I mean, you were living the values. It was honest and realistic. It was real customer-centred. And so a great, great impact. So what I'd really like to do, we've got a new member of staff starting next week, and it's really kind of hard to train people around customer services. And I was wondering if you could kind of buddy up with them just to kind of share your approach so they can get a really good understanding of good customer service. But that sounds really interesting. We'd be very interested in doing that. Um, yeah, that'd be a great, great opportunity. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Morning, Helen. Mm. Hate Mondays. Absolutely loathe them. Something up? Someone has taken my mug and my coffee. Who does that? We just witnessed Helen coming into the office with some behaviour issues that aren't conducive to the values. What developmental feedback would you give to Helen? Please press pause and discuss. Is it okay if I have a quick word with you? Are you okay? Mm, fine. Okay. Because you, didn't, you don't seem fine to me. Certainly when you walked in the office this morning, you didn't seem fine. You, um, you came in and slammed the door. There were two things I noticed. You came in and you slammed the door and then slammed the bag down on, on the table. And the other thing I noticed was, after you sat down, Michael looked up and said good morning to you, and you ignored him. And soon after that, Michael, Michael moved. He left. And um, I was just wondering, thinking about those two things that I saw, the way you came in the office and also the way you treated Michael, I just wondered, um, you know, what you think the impact of that is. Well, I guess if that happened to me, I too would most probably feel quite agitated by the fact that someone most probably just, as you said, slammed down their bag and near enough had a go at them. Okay, because I think, I think that's quite accurate because, you know, it did really bring down the atmosphere in the office and obviously it wasn't a great experience for Michael. Um, so, 
really my next question is, you know, what, what are you going to do about it? Because I think we need to move forwards. What are you going to do? I think to keep morale up, I most probably, first off, go and apologise to Mike. Either make him a coffee or something as a sorry gesture. And I think maybe in the mornings I need to take a minute before I come into work so that if something is stressing me out in the morning, I don't obviously bring it in and bring the atmosphere low. That would be really, really good. I noticed you said most probably and maybe you would do those things. I was just thinking, is that a maybe or you'll definitely do those things? It will most probably be hard because it seems to be my kind of action that I do. And if I'm angry, I come in like that. So it is going to have to be worked on for myself. Okay. Well, that, uh, that's really honest of you to, to admit that. Um, I appreciate you're going to, do, going to do those things this afternoon. And if you want any support with that in the future, um, you can come to me and I'll help you. Okay. To summarise this training clip, we've covered four areas today. Why it's important to give meaningful feedback. The considerations to think about before you start giving feedback. We talked about the aid model, the action, the impact and do. And we've looked at some practical illustrations of both developmental and motivational feedback. What I'd like you to do now is to take your hard copy of your model, which is on the table in front of you. Think about somebody you'd like to give feedback to, either motivational or developmental feedback. Working through the model and in pairs, please prepare that conversation. Thank you for your time today and good luck with feedback.